power. It comes and it goes. With youth, you find it, and with age, you lose it. However, there are other events in somebody's life that can strip them of or gain them power. You can train to get more power. You can lose a limb to lose power. There are as many ways to gain or lose power as there is people and events in the universe. But sometimes something that looks like it would take power away from you actually ends up helping you down the line. A man losing both of his legs in an explosion can get augmented, created legs that allow him to run faster than he ever ran before. A child being born with only one leg can become one of the greatest wrestlers in history. And believe it or not, in the Naruto universe, losing a Sharingan can make you stronger. See, this statement when said out loud sounds completely asinine because so far as we know in the Naruto universe, the Sharingan is one of the strongest things you can have. More than it just being an incredibly versatile Keke Genkai slash Dojutsu in its base form, it also has evolutions that turn it into a Mangikyo Sharingan or a dual Mangikyo Sharingan or an eternal Mangikyo Sharingan, which give you things like Mangikyo Sharingan abilities or a Susana, making you one of the most invincible people in the Naruto universe. So the idea of losing something that opens the door to such insane powers making you weaker sounds backwards but the sharingan's not meant for everybody see a sharingan is technically usable by anybody who has one in their face however unfortunately with the way that dojutsus work in the naruto universe if you have the dojutsu of a bloodline that you don't belong to you can't deactivate it and therefore people like donzo and kakashi have to cover up their sharingan because they can never turn them off. And while that may not sound like a big issue, it can ironically significantly stunt your possible growth as a ninja. And understanding that is key when talking about today's topic. How strong is Kakashi without the Sharingan? Because while most people would say that the loss of Kakashi Sharingan made him substantially weaker and made him one of the weakest Hokages we've ever seen, one of the more recent light novels, Kakashi Retsudan, actually proved that that isn't the case. And that not only is Kakashi not weaker without his Sharingan, he's actually substantially stronger. But how? What new abilities has he gained without his Sharingan that he's now considered stronger than he was in the war arc, DMS not included? And if he is substantially stronger than he was in the war arc, how strong is he? Well, we're gonna answer all those questions and more today, guys, but first, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. If you like the idea of me telling you how strong your favorite characters are, you're gonna love my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where I talk about all other anime that aren't Naruto or Boruto. And if you just like the idea of me talking about your favorite anime characters, you're gonna love my anime podcast, Sutaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So, Kakashi arguably the most popular character in Naruto history. Mysterious, masked, masculine, all words used to describe him. However, another word that was used to describe Kakashi after the war arc was weak. While we saw Kakashi rise to the highest level of power when he used his DMS Susano against Kaguya after he lost his access to uh, the Chakra Sharingan gifted to him by Obito from the Pure Lands, people think he took a massive step backwards. By the way, what was going on with those Sharingan? I mean, like, we kind of have an explanation, but like, do we? Like, yeah, Obito gives him his Sage of Six Pass Chakra, and technically, when he runs out of Obito's Sage of Six Pass Chakra, the Sage of Six Pass Chakra goes back to Obito, and that takes form in the form of the Sharingan. But like, if Hagoromo can just give Sasuke a Six Tome Rinnegan, why couldn't Obito just give his Sharingan to Kakashi? Does he need his Sharingan in the Pure Lands? Like, that's kind of what they were implying. It was weird. The whole, the whole thing was weird. But that wasn't the only weird thing that happened to Kakashi in the war arc. As we know previously to him acquiring both of the Kamui eyes, he had his only Kamui eye yanked out of his face by Madara. And since that Kamui eye was then later placed back into Obito, who then turned into dust, the Kamui eyes were all but destroyed, except in spirit, I guess. But thanks to the fact that Naruto was Ninja Jesus for about 30 seconds, he was able to fix Kakashi's eye, though not replace the Dojutsu because of Plot. And ever since the conclusion of the battle with Kaguya, Kakashi has been Sharingan-less, which has led people to a myriad of questions. Does he still have access to the 1,000 jutsu he copied? Can he still copy other people's jutsu? Can he still use Chidori? To which the answers to are a smatterings of yeses and noes. See, Kakashi does still have access to the thousands of jutsus he's copied over the years. However, without the Sharingan, he can no longer copy any new jutsu. Now, that's not to say that Kakashi can't learn new jutsu. He can. He just can't copy people's jutsu by watching their hand signs. And as to whether or not he can still 
still use Shidori or Raikiri in Kakashi's circumstance. He can still use it, it would just be dumb for him too. Because if we remember correctly, Kakashi created Chidori before he had the Sharingan. However, the problem with using Chidori is that it gives you tunnel vision. Tunnel vision, which is counteracted through the use of the Sharingan. So once again, yes, he can use the Raikiri, but no, he's not going to. But for a long time after the conclusion of Naruto, we were led to the assumption that Kakashi had gotten weaker. However, a couple of light novels that technically take place between episode 699 of Naruto and episode 700 of Naruto Naruto showed to us that Kakashi hasn't lost the step. In fact, he's gained a couple. Kakashi actually has two separate light novels about him, both of which that take place in what is identified as the blank period. Chronologically, the first light novel that came out was Kakashi Heaton lightning in the icy sky which is a story about kakashi after the war arc assuming the role of hokage however he has to very much be persuaded into assuming the role of hokage because pretty much directly after the fourth great shinobi world war kakashi is elected as the sixth hokage however this light novel takes place two years after the conclusion of the fourth great shinobi world war and kakashi isn't really acting as the Hokage. In fact, Tsunade is still doing the majority of the tasks. And therefore, this entire story, when it's not about Kakashi attacking a blimp, is about Kakashi assuming the role. But something very important happens in this light novel. In this light novel, we see Kakashi taking his first step back towards becoming either equally strong or stronger than he was in the war arc. Because in this light novel, we see Kakashi undergo what would be the beginning of some pretty grueling training. See, well, a couple of people definitely lost some steps between the fourth grade Shinobi World War and Boruto. Looking at you, Anko and Kurenai. Kurenai is a mother, that's unfair. But Anko's got no excuses. Hell, throw Shino in there as well. He technically lost to a child, though it's stated that he probably could have beaten Sage Mode Mitsuki in a fight. But the shape that this grueling training takes shape in is the fact that Kakashi is basically trying to reteach himself the Raikiri. However, we've already established that he can't use the Raikiri because of the tunnel vision. And thus, Kakashi harkens back to the war when he saw Madara using his purple lightning attack. Specifically, Sage Art Yin released Lightning Dispatch. You know, his Force Lightning. See, Kakashi saw Madara using this and saw how versatile and dangerous this jutsu was. Madara could use this attack to launch lightning at his enemies and hold them with it. The versatility of this lightning was next level. And thus, Kakashi began to formulate a jutsu that could emulate this usefulness and this power. And therefore, between a fair amount of fighting and a fair amount of blimp fights, Kakashi formulated purple lightning, a jutsu that had the same destructive ability and usefulness of Raikiri, but also didn't give him the tunnel vision that Raikiri did, making it ostensibly a better jutsu. And since Raikiri was such a big part of Kakashi's kit, allowing him to be able to use it without the chakra drain of the Sharingan already technically makes him somewhat stronger. Now, obviously, there's the extrasensory perception given to you through the use of the Sharingan, and there was Kamui. So Kakashi did still have a fair amount of ground to make up before he was his war arc self again. And it wasn't really until his second light novel, Kakashi Retsudan, that we saw that the ground had been covered. See, Kakashi Retsudan is the first of a trilogy of books of light novels. Kakashi Retsudan, Sasuke Retsudan, Naruto Retsudan. And this trilogy of light novels are the three newest light novels. So a lot of this information is pretty recently translated into English, with Naruto Retsudan still being translated. But in Kakashi Retsudan, to not give you the entire rundown on the light novel, essentially there's some civil discourse in a land far, far away. And that land far, far away is the land of Radaku. And in Radaku, there's a prince by the name of Nanara, who Kakashi kind of needs to train so we can use an item known as the Swegu. Now, the Swegu is a tool that was created and used by Hagoromo, the Sage of Six Paths. It's a golden cane with a bell at the end that allows you to make an unlimited amount of water. And this water can take shape in whatever form the user wants, be that rain across an entire country or a jet stream coming out the tip of the cane. All that matters is you can create water limitlessly. However, if you're unable to control this tool, the power and the amount of water you control isn't really up to you. And therefore you can accidentally create massive flash floods that kill everybody. Now, the Suegu was given to the royal family of the land of Radaku because the land of Radaku was an incredibly arid place, and therefore Hagoromo wanted them to be able to have water, so he gave them the infinite water stick. And that's basically everything you need to know about the plot of Kakashi Ratsudan, outside of what I'm about to tell you now. See, in Kakashi Ratsudan, we learn a couple of very key things about Kakashi, at least as it pertains to his power. One of the most important things that we learn about Kakashi is that he's created a couple of new jutsus, and he's able to maintain them for way longer than he should 
should be able to. In this light novel, we learn that Kakashi has created an Earth-style barrier that's immune to lightning release, which is kind of insane. That's like making a lightning-style release that's immune to wind release. See, because the chakra wheel is a wheel. And just like with Tau or Nen, certain types of elemental releases affect other types of elemental releases. Earth is strong against water. Water is strong against fire. Fire is strong against wind. And wind is strong against lightning. And finally, lightning is strong against Earth. Which means that Kakashi was able to create an Earth-style release that was immune to Earth style releases weakness. And this jutsu is known as Quartz Wall. See, this jutsu allows Kakashi to augment certain parts of his Earth release wall to glass, thus making them immune to lightning. And Kakashi not only created this insanely complicated and hard to use jutsu, he also surrounds an entire village with it, making a wall 30 meters high around an entire village that he maintains for 12 hours. And not only does he maintain this wall, there's also enemies out side of the wall actively trying to destroy it. So Kakashi had to constantly augment where Chakra was going in order to make sure that the wall was never broken. Now it's stated in this novel that nobody can maintain a mud wall for 12 hours, let alone a quartz wall. As a quartz wall is not only more complicated, but also requires much more precise Chakra control. Meaning that Kakashi not only did something that nobody should have been able to do, he did something harder than that. And that statement is followed up with this exact quote. Kakashi's combat power has significantly increased compared to when he was fighting against Obito and Madara. See, there's a big distinction in there because we're talking about when he was battling against Obito and Madara, so not DMS Kakashi. But we are saying that Kakashi in this second light novel, Kakashi Retsudan, is stronger than he was prior to DMS. That quote is followed up with the quote, it's no surprise since many years have passed since then and he's been diligently working. Although he lost the Sharingan and can no longer use Chidori, he's learned several new techniques to replace them and now his amount of chakra is enough to keep up this wall and also it's remained strong enough to withstand cannonballs so there you have it a canon statement saying that kakashi is stronger than he was in the war and why but therefore before we move on i'd like to take a step backwards because in order to understand how strong current kakashi is we need to understand how strong previous kakashi was because after all we are saying he is stronger than he used to be and therefore if we can quantify how strong he used to be we can quantify how strong he is now see kakashi has always been incredibly impressive though his backstory is a bit confusing. See, well, it's told to us by Kakashi that he graduated from the academy when he was five and became a Chunin when he was six. And we have seen in flashbacks that he was in school at the same time as my guy, and therefore that would make him much older than five or six before he became a Chunin or even graduated from the academy. But let's go with what Kakashi said. Becoming a Chunin at the age of six is unheard of. But Kakashi doesn't stop there because Kakashi became a Jonin at the age of 12. Now that we do know. That is consistent. And this makes sense because while Kakashi was in the Shinobi Academy, we saw him battle against two Chunin simultaneously and win. Now, Kakashi becoming a Jonin at the age of 12 wasn't the best timing of all time, considering the fact the Third Great Shinobi World War was going on. However, it did mean that he could lead his own Genin or Chunin into battle, which is why when Obito and Rin became Chunin, Kakashi was able to lead them. And even before Kakashi acquired his Sharingan, he was able to use two elemental releases at a very high level, Lightning and Earth. Obviously, the high level of Lightning release that he was able to use was the Chidori, which he didn't technically master because he could only attack in a straight line. But the reason that Kakashi created the Chidori is because he had already learned the Rasengan and wanted to add lightning release to it. So right there, you have two A-level ninjutsu before he turned 12. Enough about him as a child, let's talk about the form of him that we're comparing to the Sharingan-less form, his war arc form. Kakashi has some absolutely insane and very slept on feats in the war arc outside of DMS. Like the fact that he was able to, while low on chakra, create a shadow clone and use an ability known as lightning cable, which is essentially like creating a clothesline out of his Raikiri. He was then able through the usage of this lightning cable to cut through multiple version to Jinchuriki cloak tails. Something that Orochimaru could not do with the blade of Kusanagi, a blade that is said to be the parent blade of the sword of Totsuka, and is said to be able to pierce through anything. In fact, even when Monkey King Enma was turned into an adamantite staff, which is the hardest material in Naruto, he stated that being hit by the sword of Kusanagi would leave him bruised. So Kakashi's AP in that moment is higher than Orochimaru with the sword of Kusanagi. Higher than a version 2 Jinchuriki club. Not to mention that Kakashi in the war arc also believed that he would be able to blow away 
five tailed beast bombs simultaneously with the use of his Kamui, which if we're taking Kakashi at his word implies that his attack power is on par with five tailed beast bombs. Now one could say, but Kamui's just opening a portal and moving the tailed beast bombs. You can't make those equal. Being able to nullify a level of attack with an attack means your level of attack is at the level of the level of the attack that you are leveling. You get that? Not to mention with just his chakra and his chakra alone, Kakashi was almost able to rip the head off the ghetto statue with Kamui. And that's the husk of the ten tails. Speaking of Kamui, Kakashi was able to use Kamui in the fourth great shinobi world war so quickly that it surprised even Obito, who also can use Kamui, who's also fast enough that he was able to teleport inside of Anoki's particle release, grab Sasuke, and teleport out. So fast he's able to casually dodge the fourth Raikage, the fastest man alive now that Minato is dead. And when Kakashi gets a power up in the form of a version one cloak from Naruto, he's about to use the Kamui to blow away the Ten Tails. Like Kakashi is legitimately in the process of destroying the Ten Tails with his Kamui. And while obviously Kakashi states that the version one cloak makes his Kamui at least three times stronger, three times isn't that much when the feat is destroying the Ten Tails. Now, obviously Obito synchronizes his Kamui to Kakashi's and pulls him into the Kamui dimension. However, the destruction created by these two Kamui synchronizing has been compared to a Ten Tails cataclysm. Now the Ten Tails cataclysm is what happened when the Ten Tails kind of terraformed the earth. As we see in the manga and the anime, when Kakashi is pulled into the Kamui dimension, there is a massive crater created. There are tornadoes and lightning strikes that fall down from the sky. And it's very similar to the scene that was shown about how the Ten Tails terraformed the earth. Now, obviously, the entirety of this feat can't be given to Kakashi because Obito is a little sprinkled in there. But to even be involved in something that is comparable to the Ten Tails terraforming the earth, Kind of terrifying. And then when Kakashi is pulled into the Kamui dimension, he goes toe to toe with one Rinnegan Obito, which is insane. Now, mind you, one Rinnegan Obito was enough for the likes of KCM1 Naruto. He had six pass of pain that were all Jinchuriki. At this point in his life, he had half of his body made out of Hashirama's cells. He had a Rinnegan with access to all six paths. Obito, without the Rinnegan, went toe to toe with the likes of Minato while he was alive. Kakashi was able to nullify some of the Genjutsus that Obito tried on him. And mind you, we've seen some of the Genjutsus that the Rinnegan is capable of, like when Sasuke used used it on Sakura, and they're insane. And even after this battle against one of the strongest people in Naruto's history, after taking a black chakra rod to the chest, which should have disrupted his chakra flow, mind you, let's remember what it did to Jiraiya, Kakashi, after a small amount of healing from Sakura and a slight moment to catch his breath, was able to not only muster enough chakra to get himself out of the Kamui dimension, but was also able to Kamui away an entire arm off the ghetto statue, which once again is a husk of the Ten Tails. And mind you, when he accomplished this, he did it faster than Minato, yes, Minato could realize. This is the same Minato who reacted to the fourth Raikage's highest speed in his base form pre-KCM, and the fourth Raikage is so fast that he's able to outmaneuver Amaterasu, which is why an MS-wielding Sasuke had to cover his entire rib cage in Amaterasu because he couldn't keep up with the fourth Raikage. And yet Kakashi was able to use Kamui faster than Minato could react. And not only is Kakashi's Kamui quick, his Kamui reaction speed is quick. As Kakashi managed to Kamui away a Senjutsu boosted Rasengan that was in contact with him. And mind you, this Senjutsu boosted Rasengan was kicked away by Madara while he was using his six paths forward. And at the very end of the work, when Kakashi was almost blind, he was able to use Kamui to teleport a part of Madara's human side true secret orb away faster than Might Guy using 8th Gate could get there. Which all in all leaves us at 12 Kamui attempts and 9 Raikiri attempts using just Kakashi's chakra pool in the war. Now you're probably wondering, Nick, why are we talking about the Kamui? He no longer has it. There's no reason to bring this up in a conversation when talking about how strong Kakashi is without the Sharingan. And honestly, that's a good question. And the only real reason that I'm bringing up Kamui in the first place is to give you an idea of what Kakashi's chakra pool looked like in the war arc, as well as his reaction time. Because being able to pull off feats that are faster than people like Minato or the fourth Raikage can even notice, while also having the chakra pool to pull off one of the most chakra exhaustive abilities almost a dozen times in the war under the power of your own chakra says a lot about your power. It's gone completely limp on me. I'm putting them, oh God, yeah. 
I think it's about time we put him down. That is my ear. So now that we have an understanding of what Kakashi's war arc reaction time and chakra pool look like, let's also talk about his war arc speed. Kakashi has one speed feat in the manga that a lot of people use to spitball roughly how fast he is. Though it is, I'll admit, kind of a high ball, at least in my opinion. See, there's a moment after Jubito has been defeated that Obito is laid on the ground. And since he's just had the 10 tails extracted from him, he's pretty much on the way out. However, if you remember anything about the anime or the manga, you'll know that Obito was needed for something or that the Rinnegan was needed for something and that was to bring Madara back to life using Rinne Rebirth and thus Black Zetsu cannot let Obito die so he goes to glom onto Obito's body to keep him alive as well as to steal the Rinnegan however there are two people near Obito as he's dying KCM Minato and Kakashi and as Black Zetsu reaches out to grab Obito's body to glom onto him both Kakashi and and KCM Minato get there at the same time. In fact, technically Kakashi had to go further because Black Zetsu was on the opposite side of Obito from him. Now, does this mean that Kakashi's speed is equal to that of KCM Minato? Uh, probably not. KCM Minato is probably the fastest person in the universe outside of somebody like KCM2 Naruto or Baryon Mode Naruto. But it does put Kakashi in the ballpark of some high level speedsters. And when we consider some of the feats that Kakashi pulled off with his Kamu in the reaction time necessary to pull off some of these feats, that kind of makes sense. Now, technically, speed and reaction time would be a thing that Kakashi would take a hit to without the use of his Sharingan. Because without the extrasensory perception of the Sharingan, sensing what's gonna happen and getting there in an according amount of time, is gonna take a little bit of a hit. So how strong was War Arc Kakashi? Well, a fatigued Kakashi being able to keep up with an Edo Tensei Minato and KCM2 means that he's probably somewhere in the region of light speed. As Minato in base, in let alone in KCM2, has been proven multiple times to be either light speed or faster than. So putting Kakashi in the around light speed or massively hypersonic plus territory Pretty easy. Now, the attack power thing is a bit more difficult. One of the best attack power feats we have for Kakashi is him cutting through several version two cloaks, something that the Sword of Kusanagi couldn't do. And since we've seen Naruto in his version two cloak go up against the likes of Nagato and take all of the Devapath's attacks head on, even including Chibaku Tensei, which wasn't able to destroy the version two cloak that was enveloping Naruto, we can pretty easily put Kakashi's attack power at City Plus, which is corroborated by his statement that he would be able to Kamui away five tailed beast bomb which could very easily destroy a city. Defensively, this man's been through a lot. He's taken a chakra rod through his torso. He's been slashed in an X across his chest. He's been swiped and hit by a version two Jinjeriki tail and survived. He created a mud wall that blocked Obito's giant shuriken that was able to injure Giyuki, the eight tails. So I have no qualms with saying that his durability is city level plus. I'm actually gonna circle back to speed real quick because there's a couple more feats I feel as though I missed. Kakashi was able to keep up with sixth gate guy as well as intercepted a lightning bolt from Kakuzu at point blank range. He's also kept up with KCM Naruto before. So calling him sub relativistic or massively hypersonic plus, very accurate. But here's the thing, that's war Kakashi with a city plus attack and defensive ability, with the almost speed of light speed, with the superhuman stamina that allows him to use Kamui 12 times using his own chakra, with the reaction speed that allows him to Kamui away a Rasengan that is currently in contact with his skin. And the Kakashi we're talking about is new era Kakashi, who is apparently massively stronger than he was in the war arc. So how much stronger is this massively stronger Kakashi? Well, so far as feats go in the new era, he really has three that are impressive. And we'll start with the least impressive and work our way up. Now, we've already talked about his creation of the quartz wall and maintaining it for 12 hours. So we're gonna skip that one. But in the anime, outside of the light novels, we saw that Kakashi was able to blitz the likes of Nue, which is a yokai created from Hashirama's cells. And because it's created from Hashirama's cells, it's able to use wood release, though not at the level of Hashirama. On top of that, it has an insane regeneration ability with the ability to generate smaller versions of itself from injuries. It's able to teleport so it can jump into rival villages and wreak havoc. It's able to create tail beast chakra arms and self-destruct. For all intents and purposes, it is very comparable to a tailed beast. And in its strongest form, Kakashi was able to use purple lightning to not only blitz it, but also slice off its tail. But leaving the anime and going back to the light novels briefly, is Kakashi's second and therefore second most impressive feat in the new era. See, in Kakashi Ratsudan, the Suegu is unfortunately misused. And because of that, an excessive amount of water is falling from the sky and basically washing away the land of Rodaku. And in order to make sure that the land of Rodaku isn't washed away, Kakashi decides to use 
fire release. Specifically, fire release that takes the shape of a giant fire phoenix that he's able to fire at opponents at an insanely high speed. However, Kakashi isn't technically firing this jutsu off at an enemy, he's firing it off at the Shuegu. And Kakashi repeatedly fires these fire phoenixes at the source of water until he's able to snuff out the infinite water produced by a tool of the Sage of Six Paths. That is to say that Kakashi's fire style with an elemental disadvantage is able to overcome water release created by Hagoroma. That is, without mincing words, in Otsutsuki level feat. Tie that into the fact that Kakashi is most definitely able to open at least the first gate, which we never see him do in the war, which means all of his speed, durability, and reaction feats are without opening a gate, and Kakashi's ceiling can get even higher. Not to mention that Naruto said that not only was Kakashi smarter than Shikamaru, but that he also has a better sense of smell than Kiba, and a better Sharingan than Sasuke, and better Taijutsu than Rock Lee. Now, these are all just statements said by Naruto, but if you don't want to believe the protagonist of the show, be my guest. Now, a lot of people have contention with the smarter than Shikamaru thing. And honestly, I, I sort of tend to agree there. I would argue that the actual intellect of Shikamaru is higher than Kakashi's, but when it comes to adaptability on the spot, battle IQ, I have no qualms with saying that Kakashi is smarter than Shikamaru. Shikamaru needs a plan. Kakashi historically does not. So with that covered, let's get to Kakashi's final feat. The most impressive feat we've seen from him in the new era. And that is, without a doubt, swapping hands with Kashin Koji. See, if you've watched Boruto, you'll know that Kashin Koji breaks into Konoha, and who finds him other than Kakashi. Now, Kakashi and Kashin Koji swap hands for a little bit until Kashin Koji decides he needs to retreat. Now, say what you will about this fight, it is short, and we can't tell whether or not Kashin Koji is using Sage Mode in it, but the important takeaway from all of this is that Kakashi and Kashin Koji do seem somewhat equally matched, and that Kashin Koji does retreat from the battle because he identifies Kakashi as a threat. He says so himself. Now, the reason that's impressive is because Kashin Koji, with prep time, mind you, was able to go toe to toe with a 10% Jigen, which obviously isn't Jigen at 100%, but Jigen was also able to defeat Sasuke and Naruto in their strongest iterations outside of Baryon mode simultaneously. And Kashin Koji was able to kill Jigen, sort of. So Kakashi fighting on equal footing with Kashin Koji, who was able to defeat Jigen at 10%, is still. Very impressive. So where would I place Kakashi now? With all of these things considered, how powerful is our sixth Okage? Well, we can't technically quantify how high his attack power and defensive power are in the new era because we don't have enough feats. We do know that his stamina is superhuman, even more so than it was in the war, where it was almost definitely still superhuman. Chakra pool wise, he's probably top 15 in the verse, as he was not only able to maintain a mud wall for 12 hours, but an even harder mud wall that was constantly under under barrage of cannonballs. He was able to nullify an infinite water source created by the Sage of Six Paths. And considering the fact that that infinite water source was about to wash away an entire country, nullifying something like that with an elemental disadvantage, mind you, puts him at small country level. I know, insane, but it's just the way it is. Obviously, if we put Kakashi's defenses at city level plus because he was able to stop Obito's giant shuriken, which was able to injure Kiyuki in the war arc, the fact that he was able to update that mud wall to eliminate weaknesses and also increase its strength means that his defensive level is higher, probably somewhere in the region of island level. And while his speed and reaction time probably took a hit from the loss of the Sharingan, he's still probably hypersonic plus. I know I just said we wouldn't be able to scale him based off the feats that we have, but brain just gets going sometimes. So who can Hokage Kakashi defeat? Well, I'm not gonna sit here and say that Hokage Kakashi is as strong as six Tomei Rinnegan Sasuke or KCM2 Naruto as an adult. I am gonna say he's roughly mid-tier Otsutsuki level. He obviously couldn't go to bat one-on-one -on -one against the big boys like Momoshiki and Ishiki, but I have no hesitancy in saying that Kakashi could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Kinshiki or Orishiki or maybe even Kaguya. As Sasuke stated in Boruto that he alone would be enough to kill the likes of Kaguya. However, the Kaguya thing is pretty much a highball when you consider the fact that Kakashi has no ability to travel between dimensions. So Kaguya could just rip a part of a dimension, throw him in there, and say bye-bye! So Kinshiki, Orishiki, and maybe Toneri, which is pretty good. Sure, it doesn't make him even the top five strongest character in Boruto currently, but for a man who lost what many believed to be the one thing that made him powerful, he bounced back pretty royally. And I mean, what else can we expect from the coolest character in Naruto? I mean, if anybody was gonna figure out how to become stronger after losing something incredibly powerful, 
it would be Kakashi. Even Naruto hasn't figured it out yet. He just lost Kurama and all he does is bumble about how Boruto might have died. And what has Sasuke done since losing his six Tomei Rinnegan? Definitely not got strong. So what's the moral of the story? Be hot, be mysterious, and never let a loss humble you. And more than anything, never forget to ask yourself the very important question, what would Kakashi do? The answer is marry my guy and train, which is a life I wish for all of us. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that Kakashi has gotten stronger after the loss of his Sharingan? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. I think my guy was excited about the prospect of Kakashi not being powerful anymore after the war, just like him, so they could continue to be rivals because like, I lost my leg, you lost your eye. Cool, we're equal now, but they just weren't. And they're not rivals anymore, but I guess they are lovers, so good enough.